let's talk a little bit about family and home, what that means. Because when you're a home health aide, you're going to be dealing with their families and you're going to be in their home. That really changes the dynamic. Okay? Family, what does it mean to you? When I say family, do you think of maybe your mom, your dad, or your kids, or your spouse, or do you think of your dearest friends? You know, some, what everyone's family looks different. Some people aren't blood related to them, but that's their family. So families can look differently um, from one to the next, but family still carries the same connotation. Stability, protection, culture, and teaching. That's what family should be now. Some families are very solid. Roles are defined. Um, things get done. Other families are somewhat um, disorganized and even disruptive. And again, you are, it's not your job to take um, any, any kind of abuse from that family, verbal abuse or other, or to be pushed around, but it's also not your job to lash out at them or to talk back. Your job is to excuse yourself and report if you're in a situation. But just remember, you're going into their family and things may not work the same in their family as they do in your family, okay? Also home, you're going in their home. What is home? Is it just four walls with a roof on it that people reside inside? I think we all know it's more than that. It's your safe place hopefully, secure. It's your valued place of origin. It's where you have history. It's um, experiences. It's where you come together. It's your gathering place. So when you go into someone's home, you have to take this into consideration that you are in their place. And uh, when you go into people's home, you will find out how they operate, which might be different than how you operate. Also, there's cultures. And we live in a pretty uh, multicultural location, and you may see things quite differently, perhaps. Um, Cultural backgrounds can determine how your client meets strangers and how they feel about strangers being in their home. Some cultures, other cultures, boy, you knock on the door and they just pull you in, welcome you in, you're just part of a big group. Other cultures are very leery. You need to not take that personally. It's it's a cultural thing, okay? Now, religions also can influence this. When we talk about religions and cultures, you may encounter different languages, um, some different even morals and customs, foods. Um, their response to grief and pain some cultures are very stoic. They're not going to show a lot of uh, response to either grief, pain, loss, things that upset them. And other cultures, woo, it's out there. Okay. How children are disciplined can also make a big difference. 
Remember, you're a healthcare professional. You have a duty to report if you see something. You know, there's different cultures and then there's abuse. And there's a difference. Okay. Also, ways they worship can be different and days of the week that they worship. Um, you know, if they say, well, every day except the days I attend my worship service, they may not be talking about Sunday. And that's something to, qu to qualify, to ask about. So our goal is to respect their individual lifestyle and practices and not give our judgment, prejudice, or thoughts on off to that. Our job is to assist the family to maintain the home environment. Okay? It is important to be flexible and patient and yet on the same level like I talked about in the last video to have you have certain clear-cut tasks that you are to do and when it goes out of that scope you are to contact your supervisor for direction. Now, when people call you in for home health, it's generally because there's been an occurrence. Remember, you may not always have home health to the elderly. Sometimes home health happens to people who are younger, sometimes even children. And this can really change the dynamic of a family. If it is a child, you will see them regress. You know, a five-year-old might start wetting their pants again, becoming incontinent. Pretty much anyone will regress when they have a real trauma or healthcare crisis, whether they're elderly, middle-aged, young person or child, we tend to regress, go backwards. That is considered normal. You might see some of that. Okay. Now, when things like this happen, especially if it is a new diagnosis, if you're with hospice, you're working as a home health aide in hospice, let's say, and this is a new client you've taken on, and they've just learned of their diagnosis and they've signed you up. Okay, it's one of your first times there. You're going to see um, some very common things, threads that run through. There might be denial. I don't know why they called hospice. We're doing just fine. And you can look around going, mm, doesn't look like it. And we are caregivers. We want to take care of things, but we have to be careful. If you walk into a situation and your tasks are direct with the client, you're supposed to take their vital signs, monitor their weight, make sure they're getting enough to eat, maybe change a bandage, that kind of thing, and give them a shower twice a week. And um, you walk in, the place is a wreck, and you're like, oh, gosh and so you just dig in and do everything and you cook a bunch of meals and you're just working that may not be the best idea for them because if you it's a learned helplessness if you continue to do that then they will not do anything mm -hmm. and, and it's not because they're like oh she's coming make her do it it's because people regress it's because when people are faced with these horrible traumas, they just kind of go numb and go, uh, uh, right? And if you pick up all the pieces and do it for them, they're not being engaged. This might be something to talk to your supervisor about, and they may need to have the, um, the social worker come out and visit with them to help that family um, dynamic. Okay guys, how are we gonna do this? 
you know, mom can't cook and clean anymore. So who in the family is going to pick up these pieces and who's going to be responsible for what? That does not mean you're responsible for that. You do what's on your task. Of course you want to help out and do some things every once in a while. But you got to, again, be careful that we're not um, overstepping our boundary and causing some learned helplessness there. Okay. Another uh, type of uh, response to stress might be um, depression. You know, you come in and your client can get out of bed just fine. And they can get to the easy chair, but they're not. And they're just languishing there. That may be a sign of depression. Maybe they're having difficulty dealing with their new diagnoses. This is something to document and to, to pass on to your supervisor. And this is something that, you know, certainly the chaplain or the social worker needs to be aware of and work with the family on that. Um, sometimes it's anger. That's my go-to. When something comes at me, like a big stressor, boom, I'm right back at it. That's my initial knee-jerk reaction. And um, that might be your, one of your clients, you know, go-to coping mechanism. Back at you. And they might be snippy and gritchy and just kind of on edge. Again, not for you to take personal but it is for you to document, to be polite, report it, to go on, okay? So there are many things that you're going to uh, encounter in your career as a home health aide. Very rewarding. You have some one-on-one -on -one time with your client, and that is so rewarding. But it can also have some landmines that you need to be aware of and to understand. It's not for you to solve all the problems. You're part of a team and communication is important.